What's going on guys? So we are finally in a luxury fifth wheel that isn't completely swarming with people at the 2023 Houston RV Show. This specific one is actually one of my favorite brands of RVs. This is a Riverstone Legacy. Legacy is more like the trim level, Riverstone is the brand. And if you guys have watched my channel for any time, you realize that I'm a big fan of this brand. Honestly, I believe it's one of the better built, better constructed and better engineered brands that you can get. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. Part of that is the value, the fact that you're not paying super luxury custom RV pricing, but you're getting a very, very engineered design to the frame as well as other components, the sidewalls, all of that. But with me today, I got Rocky. Hi. Rocky actually is with Riverstone, Forest yes. River Riverstone Division. Yes, I am. And, uh, you know, they're familiar with my videos because I've made a lot of content on Riverstone products just recently at the, the dealer show over in Elkhart or the dealer open house. And, and I always talk about things that I really like about these units. I like the fact that you guys don't use cable driven slides. You use rack and pinion slides. You use heavier duty rack and pinion slides. Mm -hmm. 12 inch drop or 12 inch I-beam, 10 inch drop frame. And then this entire area we're standing on is steel reinforced versus the traditional aluminum bath deck. A um, lot of stuff that I like. You guys have a water manifold system, which is also really nice. Uh, you know, I like to say full body paint, but every time I say full body paint, I get I get feedback that this is not full body paint because the stripes don't continue through the sides of the slide out. This is the definition of full body paint. This right. is a true full body paint. Even though we don't carry the stripes through the sides of the slide, we do a full body paint. Even the sides of the slides are painted as well in it. Uh, we have one of our motor coach divisions do our paint job for us. We do what they call a double cut and buff with four coats of clear coat on this thing here. Really fine paint job. This is what you find on most nice, real nice motor homes, mm -hmm. this paint job right here in it. But no, it is a full body paint. One of the main reasons we do not bring the striping through the slides is that in time, sometimes you have to make adjustments to slides. Guess what happens? That striping doesn't match up anymore. It, and it drives people crazy. So for the most part, we just, just don't paint through the, through the sides of the slide in it as well. So, but uh, today we're in our number two selling floor plan, our 42 FSKG, which is a garage unit, yep. uh, quite unique in it. But uh, one thing we've done differently than anybody else is do a front kitchen version of this thing. And the kitchen is just phenomenal. People love the size of this kitchen. This is absolutely the biggest kitchen in the industry by four in it. We use a great insignia four burner stove with an oven that's actually capable of baking a turkey in it, which is fantastic. And then our unit also has a second oven, which is a convection oven here slash microwave. And it also will serve as a air fryer. So a lot of residential features we put in this unit here. Solid wood cabinets. We do soft closed drawers in all of our cabinets. Uh, right here, soft closed cabinet doors. A lot of people to cut cost. They've moved away. Like I used to walk through some units and everything was soft close. But gradually you're seeing some of these RV units like, okay, well that might not be maintainable. Riverstone still maintains both soft closing drawers as well as soft closing cabinets. Exactly. Let's see here. Hold on, I gotta get it. There you catch. go. You gotta get it. And then right here. Same thing. Mm -hmm. So again, you see some companies and some brands that have kind of said, okay, we're going to put them on, but then they tend to disappear, but do. not on the Riverstone product. Right. You know, cost is a big factor. These guys, if they can save 50 cents per coach to you, it sounds like nothing, but these guys are looking at a yeah. thousand coaches being built. So 50 cents here, 50 cents there. It means a lot to these guys. Our budget is a little bit greater than most of these guys. You yeah. know, we're able to build you a home on wheels, a true home on wheels. I mean, we go to solid surface wood. All of our wood is solid wood. It is painted or stained. This is not vinyl wrap. Even our crown molding, not vinyl wrap. These little pieces here are real wood that's actually stained or painted in it. You know, everybody else goes to a vinyl wrapping on it. We do, of course, the day night shades throughout the coach. We don't skip on the day night shades mm -hmm. in the bedroom area. We actually do a day night shade as well there. And then we do trim around our so all these shades stay in place. Yep. And the insulated windows too, dual pane windows on your units. And that's standard. You mm -hmm. know, they, they, everybody is an option. With mm -hmm. us, it's standard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dual pane windows are a lot more expensive, they're heavier. 
we understand these things but when you get out in those freezing cold weathers or yep. even in the middle of the summertime when it's real hot those insulated windows will help keep the cold air in in the summertime the warm air in in the winter time so. well, what's really interesting is is that i i always got feedback from folks saying that dual pane windows they count for like an r3 r value which is a super super low r value mm -hmm. but practically that's not what i've experienced when you walk into an RV that has standard single pane glass windows on a hot day and you touch that window, you feel like you're going to bake your hand. Correct. When you go into an RV with dual pane windows, and even no matter how hot it is, it might be mildly warm. Mm -hmm. That air gap between the two windows does a tremendous amount more than what people think. It does. So I think folks that have single pane windows might sometimes not realize that that single pane glass is actually radiating heat inside. So it's almost like a negative R value. It's not blocking anything. It's turning into this hot glass surface, which then brings that heat inside and can contribute to things like mold and condensation and other issues. Whereas dual pane windows, they are, they're terribly, I hate to say this, but they're very expensive. They're very heavy. Mm -hmm. And they're one of those things that once you get them, you're never going to want an RV without them. That's, That's what correct. I've realized. That is so true. It, it really is. Uh, I've had people who been in, in this unit in the Arizona summers, which are extremely hot, and they're fortunate enough to be able to stay in these units because of the dual pane windows, because of mm -hmm. the insulation, where if you take a standard travel trailer or fifth wheel, you know, they weren't designed to live in full time. You know, they're designed to camp in, and so they're not going to have the insulation values. They only have a two inch thick wall. They will have single pane windows, so they're going to experience the heat from there and vice versa when you go north You know you go to Nebraska in this time of year. It's cold. Yep. you know This unit is maintaining and doing well up there. You know some of the others Well, not so not so good, yep. but do the insulation You know the things that we do different is we build this thing as a home on wheels this is your house. This is your home. We do residential refrigerator. And of course, the first thing everybody asks is, well, that's a 110 refrigerator. Will it run while we're driving down the road? Yes. We would, what we do is we have an inverter put into this thing that takes 12 volt power from the battery, converts it over to 110, and runs this refrigerator. We also put a single 190 watt solar panel on top as a standard feature that will help charge that, keep that battery charged mm -hmm. for you. So. You know, we do some things differently. Dishwasher. But we have a dishwasher in every one of our units mm -hmm. on it. That's standard. You know, the big insignia four burner stove with the big oven, that is standard. We also do a tankless on demand Truma water heater. Standard. Mm -hmm. This is not your drawer or your suburban, which are dual stage. This is a multi stage 60,000, 65,000 watt um, heating element in this thing. It will actually get the water to 120 degrees, where the others will only can get water 20 to 25 degrees yeah. hotter than what's coming into the unit itself. You, you know, what I like to say is actually kind of uh, adding to a point you made a little earlier about hinges, slow closing drawers, and all mm -hmm. these little things. It's 50 cents here, 50 cents here, a dollar here, five dollars here, four dollars here. Um, when you're talking about drawers, yeah, the difference between a soft closing drawer pull or, or uh, slide versus mm -hmm. one that has it is like four dollars per drawer it's it's pretty expensive uh -huh. actually but the thing i want to bring up here is is the insignia and i'm not asking i'm going to actually make an interesting point here the, is the insignia stove uncommon in the rv industry no it's not more of your nicer midline rvs are starting to have them either optional or standard convection microwaves kind of the same thing uh, dual pane windows are an option soft closing drawers soft closing cabinets even dishwashers the thing that separates Riverstone, in my opinion, is the fact that you get all of it. A lot of these brands will give you something like this because it's eye candy. You see it and you're like, man, that's great. This is the reason why I should buy this RV. But then you go to the microwave and it's a standard microwave. Or you go to your windows and they're standard single pane windows. Or you don't have a dishwasher even though there's a spot for a dishwasher. Or you don't have a washing machine, which I'm pretty sure you're probably going to have a standard washing machine in this washing unit. Washing machines, washer and dryer, the two-piece washer and dryer is standard for Riverstone. You buy a Riverstone, you're automatically going to get that in your coat. What about AC units? We have, it comes standard with two 15,000 high performance, low profile, quiet cool ACs. Every one of my dealers order, orders it with the optional third air, mm -hmm. which is another 15,000. 
So that's three 15,000 BTU high performance, low profile mm -hmm. ACs that's on this unit. But we go a step beyond that. And instead of telling you, hey, you can run either any two of the three that you want, we do power management in our, in our units standard, which allows you to run all three ACs on 50 amp service. That's awesome. If you ever get stuck in 30 amp, you can still run two ACs. That is the difference between Rivers, a Riverstone build and others out there. And, and I know it kind of sounds like I'm being a Riverstone fanboy here, but the reality of it is, as I walk through a lot of units, I've done probably nearly 2,000 RV tours over the last five years. Mm -hmm. And again, I go through a lot of them and I see what certain manufacturers are bringing to market. And a lot of them do really innovative things. I, I get it. But the thing that keeps me coming back to Riverstone and being a fan of the product, even though I've never owned one, so it's not me mm -hmm. buying one and saying I've owned it and I've loved it and I've lived with it. It's the fact that of all the ones I've toured and all the ones I've seen, there's certain consistencies that are always there inherent to the brand. I didn't see them really decontent too much of their units over the last couple of years, like take a bunch of really nice things out that you wanted, start going to super cheap stoves or start going to super cheap microwaves or replacing AC units with super cheap AC units. You guys have always had kind of this focus on including things that people expect from a Riverstone product. And, and I can appreciate that. So that's the reason why I'm a fan of the product. And you still do the things that everyone has come to love and know about the RV, like three inch thick sidewalls, right? Is there a true benefit in your opinion to a three inch thick sidewall versus a traditional two inch thick sidewall? Okay, let's put it to you like this. You take a three inch sidewall versus a two inch sidewall. Which one can you put more insulation in? Mm -hmm. You know, that is the key to it insulation more insulation it does a number of things not just keeps the cold air in or the hot air in it also serves as a buffer to the sounds on the outside when mm -hmm. we close this door right here this coach is real quiet inside this is more like being at your home mm -hmm. your home is built with two by fours basically we use something similar but aluminum mm -hmm. in building our units itself Yep, and then you have the dual pane windows coupled along with that, plus the extra insulation in the ceiling, mm -hmm. the extra insulation below. Uh, one thing I like to always talk about is the structure of a Riverstone. The mm -hmm. structure of a Riverstone to me is very unique because it's the only, well, I, I don't want to say the only mass-produced brand, but it's the only high-volume brand that has a very customized frame to it. Um, and when I mean customized frame, this whole area right here, again, it's not aluminum, bath deck within a steel front overhang. It's all steel reinforced. But one thing you all do differently than other manufacturers is you still put that on top of a 12 inch I-beam with a 10 inch drop beam frame. So you still have thick I-beams supporting everything. You didn't just go to this, this spider web of steel up here to try to engineer a way to still give you the support. You still kept the main support, but then you reinforced it with a steel structure around where what would normally be considered the bath deck area would be. That's correct. Sorry. That's correct. <clears throat> it's important. You know, this thing weighs a lot. We understand. It takes a one ton uh, to pull this thing here. And just think all that weight sitting on a back of a truck and all that weight is on that 90 degree angle from coming from the kingpin area down to the main structure itself. And the flex that it has to happen when it's going down the road it's unbelievable. I don't care how many gussets you put in, it's still going to flex. So that's why a lot of these other brands, you'll see as time wears on, they form these little stress cracks in the fiberglass. They'll tell you it's just cosmetic. I understand that. But once fiberglass cracks, it still will start weeping water in, mm -hmm. which causes a potential problem for that unit. By doing the all steel upper deck is that instead of coming straight down from that 90 and that's the only support, we run that 8 inch I-beam all the way down to the upper deck area here and then tie it into the mainframe in two spots which eliminates that stress point. Yep, makes it a much more solid, more rigid Much connection. more solid, much more rigid. That weight isn't a factor anymore. Yep. Yep, and that's one thing I appreciate about, about a product like this. You know, there are, everyone's gonna have their own opinion as far as interiors, as far as colors, as far as things like that. And there were some people who came onto the RV a second ago and they'll, they'll see another floor plan. They're like, well, that one had a window right here. That one had this right here. And the floor plan they may be comparing this to is inferior in so many ways from a construction perspective. Um, and I'm only talking about from a construction perspective. There may be a lot of differences there, but Sometimes I like to bring up that when you're looking at a Riverstone, you can't just look at it 
based on what you see on the surface because there's so much more that goes into it than just the surface stuff. It, from uh, you know the naked eye, you can't typically tell if someone's using press board that has paper over it mm -hmm. or real wood. Correct. So you walk up to this and you're like, oh, well that right there, that amount of wood right there is $50 worth of wood on this unit where it's probably $10 worth of wood on another unit, but it looks mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. The sidewalls, you can't tell that they're three inch thick sidewalls until you go to the opening there and actually measure it. And how many people do that? Nobody. Nobody. So you can't tell. And when you start looking at the things that are engineered into this product that makes it a superior product, that's really where I try to at least get that information out. You know, so mm -hmm. real quick, I don't want to make this video too long, but the whole point of this is, is it's kind of the why Riverstone. A lot of people ask me that question. Like, I know you talk a lot about it. You're, you always seem to be really excited about it. But the reality of it is there's a lot to be excited about with how you guys construct your RVs and how they're different. They're not the least expensive and they're not meant to be. I think that's the goal. When you have a budget to build Forest River's best fifth wheel, most luxurious fifth wheel, especially I saw that prototype unit you guys had at the, the open house. That thing was insane. Mm -hmm. But when you guys are budgeted to build the best, you are able to maintain all those little luxury upgrades that a lot of other manufacturers decontent from their mm -hmm. units because they see these incremental savings. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's as simple as can be. When we build Riverstone, we say we build five a day. Basically, we start five, and five come off the assembly line at the end. You know, at the end of the day, but it, it takes approximately eleven days to build a Riverstone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when it goes down each station, we're able to spend more time in a unit than a guy trying to build twenty of these things a day, or twenty-five a day, or thirty a day. So our fit and finish is always going to be better mm -hmm. because we're able to use spend more time in each station yep. to make sure these things are put together. You know, we understand one thing. Our budget says we can build a full-time living coach, a home on wheels. So we want to react and, and, and treat it like that and build you a true home on wheels, not a camper. Yep. And what you said actually is something people should really think about. Five a day, which are we talking about a seven day work week or a five day work week? Oh, right? we're talking five day work five week. Five day work week. So they're, they're building roughly 25, un 25 units come off the assembly line each week. 25 units go on the assembly line each week. Compare that to the industry average of roughly 20 to 30 units per day that come off the, the line. Everyone likes to say, why can't they spend five more minutes in each each uh, each station mm -hmm. just doing fit and finish, quality checks, doing those things? Well, that's what you get with this. And the price reflects that. I hate to say that, but when you're talking about real, real wood, when you're talking about higher end electronics, higher end components, water manifold, it needs to spend more time because these are more complex systems to put in place. But at the same time, you're gonna get that more time. It's gonna be at each station longer and it's gonna be inspected more. Is every unit gonna be perfect? No. It's not. It's just it's just a nature of the beast. These are assembled 100% by people. Mm -hmm. They're not robotic. It's not like a car. You can't compare these to cars or trucks. People love to do that, but you can't. Just because the dealership experience might be similar, the, the whole concept of an RV being like a vehicle is way off. Vehicles are 80% manufactured by machines, 20% mm -hmm. assembled by hand, but everything is dialed in to a degree that it has to be for the automotive industry. Everything here is 100% done by hand, besides appliances and things like that. Right. But that's a challenge. So I like how Riverstone constantly, you know, exceeds my expectations in terms of quality. And that's the reason why I talk so highly about it. But uh, Rocky, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for coming on camera. Thank you, JD. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again real soon.